Hello, hello. Facebook Live, Jason Rice Lot Pop, 21 days of December do's and don'ts. This is number nine. Um, reading off the screen there. And one of the things that came into mind, what's up, Roswick? One of the things that came to mind, um, matter of fact, when I was talking to John Roswick, is, you know, for the tip today was um, don't overcomplicate your cars when you're pricing them. Now, I'm going to, I hear what I will tell you is our best performing stores um, don't overanalyze the vehicles. I would say over the years, the 13 plus years, I've been helping dealers with their inventory, pulling them up. Should we change price? Should we not? I would tell you over the 13 years that I've been doing this, the dealers that start digging into the competitive set and justifying, well, mine's the only white one. Well, mine's the only one with power adjustable pedals and, and then sorting it and resorting a competitive set and then looking at it and spending five, 10 minutes over analyzing the, the car are the dealers that continue to struggle. I just tell you that. That's just, I, the dealers that don't overcomplicate it, it just, stick to stick to their process are the ones that are consistently successful when you try to control things when you can try to control your gross it ends up costing you gross when you can try to control the market and how you're comparing that car down to power adjustable pedals no heated seats but i got a roof and it's certified and mm -hmm. I, now i'm 93 percent of the market so i think i look good but if you rip all that stuff out like the consumer's probably shopping anyways you drop from 93 to 100 you know um that's where a lot of dealerships, I think, are missing it. Now, I'm going to back up and, and say you do need to know what you're competing against. I think day one when I price a car, I'm going to look at the competitive set. I'm going to see if there's a big chunk of cars that have accidents or if it's the guy down the street that bought 17 of them from Enterprise and, and starting a handful out really cheap and know that. Or if, especially if it's an older car and I'm competing against a lot of bad Carfax cars or a lot of independents that don't do the reconditioning that I do. I get all that. But once you do that day one, one and kind of set your market, the market really doesn't change a whole lot in 30 to 60 days. Yeah, this one leaves and this one gets at it, but you, you, you don't need to do that on every car every time you look at it. Um, and the dealers that overanalyze the car, both when they price it, when they start narrowing it down, there's some things that are justifiable. You got a Highline car, nav and stuff like that matter, or tech packages matter, or wheels matter. I get that, and you wanna make sure you narrow down to things like that. But most cars, you know, um, I, would, I would argue, and a lot of people, I'm strong CPO. I'm very, I want every dealer to be very strong in CPO, but I would tell you, you know, most domestic stores probably aren't best at narrowing down the domestic car to just certified and comparing it only to certified. Um, I say that because, you know, BMW does a good job for their BMW certified program. And they, 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 the, the OEM does a lot of commercials and justifies and defends and builds brand and value in their certification program that customers, I think, do go look specifically for a certified BMW. But a domestic shopper um, might not on a regular car because there's not a lot of brand awareness of it. I want dealers to do the certified if you're domestic. I want you to train your team on it and I want them to defend it. I think there's a huge benefit of CPO. But when I'm narrowing down a Ford Focus that I certified, I don't want to just narrow it down and blindly look at the certified Ford Focuses because I think a Focus is more of a payment buyer. And yes, they would buy the certified car more than the non-certified car, but if you're not in their budget, if it costs them 500 or grand more and their payment goes up because of it, they're just gonna settle for the non. So you gotta understand those shoppers and know, I would put certification into the mix, see how I price and how I look, take certified out of the mix, see how I price how I look. If nothing really changes, I would keep certified out of the equation and just price to the masses. But once, once dealers start digging into, um, well, let's pull up that car. Well, let's go to the competitive set. Well, let's sort it by miles. Well, let's sort it by distance. Well, let's sort it by ones with roofs. Let's, uh, and, 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 and just overcomplicate it. Those are the stores that I see at least on my end, has always struggled. 
And that's the same manager that tries to, well, you know what, I'm going to price it here and give it another week. I, I, I paid high at it, but I'm, I'm going to try it out for a bit and see if I can get out of it. And then they try to control the gross and they ask more for it and don't react fast enough to the car and get off of it sooner than later. Good afternoon, bid pride more. I liked your morning meeting. I don't know if that was this morning or not, but that was good about the batter and the three bats. Um, keep it up. But hey, you know, don't overcomplicate the cars. If you've had this car price and you've narrowed it down to the 17 Ford Focus, you know, package and you're at 100% of the market for the first two or three weeks and, and you're not getting traction, then adjust the price. I mean, you can go over analyze and see what cars are, what cars are not. Your price, that 18 grand or whatever number it is, hasn't worked for two weeks. Does it matter what the guy down the street's doing? No. So your car is not performing. I don't care if the guy down the street says is a silver one and yours is the only white one. 17 grand or 18 grand hasn't worked for two weeks. Now what? So don't overcomplicate the car. That kind of reminds me. I've always had these dealers that <laughs> worrying about the guy down the street. Well, what's the guy down the street doing? Or how come he's selling 300 cars and I'm only selling 80? Well, you're selling 80 carrying you know, 90, he's selling 300, carrying 500. Quit worrying about what he's doing. You know, worry about what you're doing. It's like the Michael Phelps. You ever seen that where he's swimming? It's a picture at the Olympics and he's swimming. And the guy in seconds looking over at him, wondering what he's doing. You know, Michael Phelps is focused. He ain't worried about that guy next door. So same thing with your cars. Quit worrying about the ones in the competitive set. If you have this car price, it's photoed right. It's described right. It's, it's the, everything's good. And you have it at this price. And then it's, been a week or two, you haven't had enough, the conversion's low, you're heavy in that segment, heavy in that year, change the price. Who cares what's going on out there? Now, again, I say that, go back to the beginning. I know at the very beginning, you want to look at the competitive set, understand what the car is. You know, certain cars have a competitive set that can have a lot of dirty car faxes and histories and, a, and the independent dealer, a lot of the independent dealers and or enterprise has all these and they're cheap selling them. Be aware of those things. You got to look at that. I get it. But again, at some point in time, let it go. Um, yeah, and a lot of dealers, John Roserick's point, a lot of dealers will narrow it down to all of a sudden try to make their cars look good. And I'm going to give you one more quick example here. I try to make these uh, 10 minutes or seven minutes in. But um, I had a dealer I was looking at with one of my performance manager, and he changed the price every week, every week. Every car had a price change last week. And I'm like, if this guy is changing the price every Tuesday, going in and changing every single car's pricing. Why does he have an aging problem? Then I noticed he had a 97 day old car or a 70 day old car that was still at 97%. I said, if I'm a betting man, I guarantee you this guy's jacking up his pricing. He's raising his prices, not lowering them. Sure enough, I go pull up his car. Now he lowered his price last week to 35, 35, five to 35, but a month earlier, he went from 35 grand to 36 grand. And then he moved it to 35, five, and then he moved it back to 35 where he was a month ago. And that's why he's aging. But that's not the point. What John was talking about, he had it narrowed down to heated seats, no. And so he was at 96% or whatever, 97%. I took that out. It jumped him up to 99%. So not only is he hiding the fact, uh, you know, it's not on the no price change in seven days or it's not on a no price change in two weeks. He's changing his prices every week, but he's jacking his prices up. And on top of that, he's narrowing it down to what's irrelevant on the car. He's just trying to make it look better. Needless to say, he's gone from a like a 20% aging problem to about a 40% aging problem by doing all that stuff because he's trying to control his gross. He's not not making any money on it. it was a three grand loser so he's jacking up his prices putting it back it was jacking up his right putting it back it was throwing this equipment make it look good and he's just he's trying to control it let go just take the bullet it's easy for me to say i understand it's not my paycheck but man take the bullet bite it and move on uh jason rice a lot at lotpop.com. Give me an email. Go to our website if you want a free evaluation. All these tips end up on YouTube. We have about 150. Just go to YouTube. Go to Lot Pop Inc. All of our video tips are there. There's 150 of them. Uh, post them on LinkedIn, but I also put them in SoundCloud, which gets them on iTunes and stuff. So podcasts, if you don't have time to watch, but maybe listen while you're working out, hit me up on there. Follow that. Um, hope this is helpful. We'll see you on Monday. Thanks.